and welcome to Season 1, Episode 1 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kev, and as you can see, I've just been appointed as the manager of Boston United in the Conference North. And the very first thing that struck out, that struck me um, from being appointed as manager of Boston is just how much money they've offered me. Um, I think £750 a week is more than you usually get for a first management job in the Conference North. I usually do start my games at this level, um, and it's usually I'm sure it's usually less than that. I'm, if I was into research, I'd probably go back and check, but I haven't done that. Uh, but if you watched my preview to this series, um, you'll have seen that I try and play these games um, as realistically as possible, basing all decisions on what I would do if the game was real, so if this is what's actually happening to me in my life. So I thought for a moment, £750 a week, well that's that's more than I earn from my job, that's about £40,000 a year, um, especially when you factor in the bonuses and stuff. So if I was genuinely offered £40,000 a year to go and manage Boston United, I'd give up my job and move to Boston. So that's what I'm going to do. That's the house I'm going to buy, I think. Um, nice little three-bedroom, semi-detached house in Boston. £120,000. That's where I'm going to be living. Happy days. Um, I had my little intro meeting with Boston. Um, they gave me their background. Um, as you can see, it's not a particularly illustrious background. Um, they had their best spell during the 2000s. They actually had a few seasons up in the Football League, um, having won the... Uh, the Conference National, or whatever it was called back then. Um, but they got relegated from the league. They got relegated again um, due to financial ir irregularities. They went from, I think they went from League Two down to the equivalent of the Conference North. Um, and they've pretty much stayed at that level ever since. The, the money problems are sorted-ish, and there's still not a lot of money knocking around in the club. Um, but they are now looking to rebuild and start moving their way back up the football pyramid. On first inspection of the squad... It's not too bad, actually. Um, I did actually have quite a short save as Boston manager last year, and I recognise some of these names. And I recognise a couple of the others because I'm a Peterborough United fan in real life. So straight away I noticed the goalkeeper, Henrik Ravas. He's on loan from Posh. Um, he's a teenager, um, and he's not really going to be good enough for what we're looking to do. I mean, if you look at his star ratings for our assistant manager's report, he's he is the weak link of the squad, um, and you don't ever want your goalkeeper to be the weak link in your squad. So first point of business for the summer is at some point I am going to need to bring in a new goalkeeper. Um, Ravis is perfectly fine to have around on the bench, no issue with that at all, but I do want someone in goal who's at least as good as the rest of the team. Ideally, I'd want him to be one of the best players at the club, just because it's such a crucial position. Uh, looking through the rest of the squad, um, we haven't really got a left-back. Carl Piergiani, he's a former Peterborough youth player and um, he's a centre-back really so for him to be the best left-back at the club so and he's not got left-back lifted and listed under his positions that suggests we really do need to go out and get a left-back but we are strong in the centre-back department Scott Garner, Piaggiani, Lionel Stone all very good centre-backs for this level and Zach Mills and Liam Mars both very good right-backs and Liam Mars can play at left-back as well so potentially he could come across and uh, drop in if we're not able to bring uh, good enough left back into the club. In midfield, uh, Scott Garner can play there as well and is the best central midfielder at the club. Um, and I think that's probably where I'm going to be planning on using him as a ball winning midfield player, leaving Piaggiani and Stone to be our centre backs. Um, and then Kyle Dixon um, is also a pretty decent uh, Conference North midfield player. And that's a about it really. Um, wide player wise, Kane Felix is a player I recognised from my save last year. Um, he, I had a lot of joy with him as a as an attacking left winger and I think that's going to be where I'm going to look to play him again. Interestingly he is left footed um, and I did play him on the left wing all last year but my assistant manager seems to think he's a much better right midfielder than left midfielder um, so it might be that his feet have swapped around since last year or I might have to rethink and perhaps play him on the right in which case we need to bring in a left midfielder because we don't, we have a bit of a gap in the squad there as well. And then up front, Dale Selfwell is a very good, um, quick goal scorer at this level, but we don't really have anyone to play up with him. Jack Friend is another player on loan from Peterborough, um, very raw, might be a decent enough partner for Southwell. The problem is they're very similar styles of play. They're both sort of your advanced poacher, advanced forward poacher type player. And really, at this level, I want uh, I want a big target man to go alongside one of those two. Um, or failing that, someone who can at least drop a little deeper and act as that uh, link up between midfield and attack. So there's certainly a few 
a few gaps that we need to plug in this squad before we get up and running. Um, problem is we don't have any money to do that. Um, there's only £50,000 in the bank. None of it has been set aside as transfer budget. Um, our wage budget is £2,500 a week and we're already pretty much spending it. So there's going to be some serious wheel of dealing needing to be put into this for before we're able to start to assemble the sort of squad that we want because ideally I want to get promoted I don't want to be hanging around in the conference north forever but the board are expecting mid-table and very much the squad looks like a mid-table squad and there isn't really any money there to bring in the uh, the volume of players I want to bring in so it might be a case of having a season of consolidation just trying not to get sacked letting a lot of this team go and then bringing in wholesale changes next summer when there's a bit more wage budget to play with. But I guess we'll have to see where things are as we get towards maybe Christmas time and reevaluate what that plan might be at that point. So the season expectations, the board, as I say, are looking for mid-table. I could have got a little bit more money out of them by going for a top half finish or a playoff finish. But the pressure that would go along with that for what amounted to maybe an extra £150 a week, the type of quality I want to bring in, that's maybe one extra player. And I'm not sure one player is the difference between a mid-table finish, which I'm very confident we can achieve, and pushing for the playoffs, which is, I mean, that's the top five at this level. And I don't know, I don't want to get sacked for finishing seventh or eighth, because personally I think that would be a good season. So... Let's go for a mid-table finish and work within our means. Same with the FA Cup and the FA Trophy. We're just going to go for the minimum expectations. I want time to bed in, see what this squad is like, and then start to aim for bigger and better things from next season. So this is very much consolidation, seeing where we are, and trying not to get sacked. Let's bought a house in Boston, after all. Um, season tickets. Obviously, the fans are really excited. that such a big-name manager has come in. We've sold... The grand total of 305 season tickets, hopefully another couple of hundred on the way to get them to 500. But that's the kind of size of club that we're dealing with here at Boston. 500 season tickets and the board are happy. So, getting into the friendlies. And this was our first one away to Deerham. Um, we were massive, massive favourites for this. We played, at this point, pretty much the strongest side that we had available. Because we only had, I think, 17 or 18 actual players at this point I did start to bring in a lot of trialists um, to try and pad the squad out as the pre-season went on um, but this is the team that we went with for that first game and as you can see we did pretty well we we were dominant in the game we had 16 shots to their two and we won 5-0 and the goals were nicely shared around um, with a lot of the names that will be uh, will be familiar from that little recap that I just gave, Dale Southall, our big hope for getting a for being a twenty goal a season striker off the mark already. Kane Felix, the winger that I mentioned, and uh, some fella called Deli Adebola, who um, I'd heard of, and he came up on our scouts. So I thought, oh, we we said we were after a target man, so uh, we signed him. We signed him on non-contract terms. He's thirty nine years old. Uh, he's 40 years old now. He was 39 when he signed. He's had a birthday since then. Um, yes, what am I doing signing a 40-year-old? Well, he's come in for basically nothing. Um, he's not cost us anything in transfer fees. He's not costing us anything on a weekly wage. He's just pay as you play. And I think for some much-needed experience in the squad and to be a partner for Southwell and that target man that I said I wanted you're not going to find many better target men for the Conference North than Deli Adebola. Um, and the great thing about him being on non-contract is if he if he does really well, we're paying him about £150 a match. So if he does really well, we're going to pay him less than most of our first team anyway for him playing every game. If he doesn't do very well, we don't pay him. And if he really doesn't do any well, we can always release him. But if he does go on to score 10, 15 goals and be that link-up man and do cause lots of problems for defences, no one's going to want to come in and buy him either because he's 40 years old. So we've hopefully got a fairly safe, risk-free signing there um, who could be a potential difference maker for the side. Um, we've also brought in a goalkeeper, Alex Gott. Um, he's only 19 years old. He's in on a free transfer, but he is better than Ravas and better than anything else we had at the club. Um, I'm a little bit worried about his shot stopping, but at this level, I guess you, you have to make do with what you can do. I am still on the lookout for a goalkeeper in addition to Gott. I think he'd be a very, very good backup player to have. Um, but I'm comfortable starting the season with Alex Gott in goal if that's what it comes down to. 
Um, we then went into our next pre-season friendly. This one was away to Mikulova. Um We made slightly difficult work of this. This should be a game that was just as comfortable as that first game against Deerham. We went 1-0 down. There were far more trialists in the side this time. It was probably half of the match day squad, half of the starting eleven were made up of trialists. So it is to be expected that you're not going to be quite as dominant, I guess. Um, but good to see some of those familiar names on the score on the score sheet again. Kane Felix, Dale Southwell. If they can continue scoring as consistently as they have in the pre-season friendlies throughout the rest of the season, then we are going to have a good season. Um, we then carried on with our transfer business. Joey Johnson, a 19-year-old striker coming in. I don't expect this lad to be pushing the first team immediately. Really, he's coming in as a backup to Southwell, as a backup poacher. Uh, but he's young, he's quick. Again, he's on non-contract. So he's just a handy player to have around. I've brought in a few strikers over the course of this summer um, and pretty happy to have uh, have someone who can come in and just be around the squad. So if anything does happen to Southwell, we're not scratching around trying to find another player who can come off, come off the bench or come into the team and score some goals for us. Um, the next friendly after that was away to Boston Town and Joey Johnson, our new signing, got a goal um, and Dale Southwell got the other three. That's five goals in three games in pre-season for Southwell. Definitely living up to the early early pre-season billing of this guy needs to be our goal scorer. If we're going to have a good season, he's going to have a good season. And I really am thinking if we can keep him fit, we should be looking at 20, 25 goals from him. And he has been playing really well in the pre-season friendlies. So good to see another game where we've dominated the opposition. It was slightly worrying that we were 1-0 down at half time, but we really were playing a lot of trialists in that first half. And we brought more of the expected first 11 on for the second half and really did dominate the game from that point on. Um, we then carried on with the policy of bringing in young strikers on non-contract terms in the hope that one of them will stick and one of them will make an impression. Owen Heather is a potential target man, so I'd like to think he can be giving some competition to Deli Adebola as the, as the player to go alongside Southwell. Um, he's not as good in the air as you expect for a target man, and he's only five foot seven, but he's got the ability to play as a target man or a deep line forward. Um, I imagine he's more likely to be deep lying forward, but he's got potential. Um, he could end up being a, a useful squad player to have around. Um, and then we've also brought in Morgan Ferrier, who is another backup poacher. I know what you're thinking. Why am I signing so many strikers? Because we didn't have any. They're all cheap. They're all in on non-contract. They're all pay as you play. Um, we don't know if any of them are going to be any good. So when there's no risk in signing them, what's the harm in bringing in five or six? So that was the thinking behind bringing Therrier in when we'd already signed is it four by this point, strikers. Um, and then we finally brought in the left back that we needed, Dylan Casey. He's only 19. Um, he's not quite as good as the rest of the back four are expected to be, but he has the potential to improve. Um, he's a natural left back. Um, so... We've, we can then sort of have some competition between him and Mars, the right back who can also play at left back. Um, and also Piagiani, the centre back who could go across the left back. Between the three of them, I think we've got plenty of cover for left back now. Um, and it's good to have a player competing with a couple more experienced pros who can come in as a youngster, get used to the way we play, hopefully develop with us and maybe start to make that position his own as the season goes on. Um, we then signed a winger. We mentioned we might need to bring in a left winger. If Kane Felix has become a right-sided player since last year's game, um, then we need a left winger. So we've got Jack Williams, um, 20-year-old, again on non-contract. It's purely because we don't have any wage budget to play with. We don't have any transfer budget. So this is my only way to bring players in. Um, but this lad is a, is a proper out-and-out -out left winger. We're going to need to play him slightly deeper on the left side of midfield, but with attacking instructions. Um, and he has the he looks like he could be a, a very useful winger to have around the squad at this level. And um, quite creative um as well, could play as a playmaker or an inside forward if needed. Um so pretty happy with him, um, just to give us a little bit more depth in those wide areas. And that brought us into our final preseason friendly. Um yeah, we lost five 0 Did we really expect to do any better against Wigan? No, they're in League One, they're expected to win League One. <laughs> 
and I don't think we embarrassed ourselves. We were fairly even for possession. Yeah, we didn't really create anything, but it was only 2-0 at half-time. Um, we started with pretty close to what our starting lineup is likely to be for the first game of the season, and it wasn't really until we took those guys off on the hour mark and brought on the reserves and the youngsters that Wigan really started to show off and completely dominate. So for that expected starting 11 to hold their own for the first game I've got to be happy for the first half sorry I've got to be happy with that and um, I think there was positives to come out of that match even though we got thumped 5-0 um, and also a big positive was the fact that it was a big attendance and brought some much needed cash into the club as well last signing no two more signings sorry before we get into the live come of the first game of this actual league season and um, this guy has come in from our parent club Notts County um, I don't expect him to play anytime soon. He's a 17-year-old centre-back. He's not as good as what we've got at the club. But what we've got at the club is three good centre-backs. We're only going to play two at a time, but Garner's likely to be in midfield. Piazzani could have to go across the left-back on occasion. So we could find ourselves from time to time with, us, with maybe being a centre-back short. Couldn't find anyone good to bring in on a permanent or a non-contract basis. So they offered us a few players out. None of them looked great, but this was the best defender of the bunch. So as a fourth choice defender in the Conference North, I'm sure he'll be fine. He looks like he's going to be a good player as he gets older. So he might surprise me and, and really race forward in his development and start to get into the team towards the end of the season. He's here for the full year. Um, and then lastly, oh, sorry, that was uh, that's a look at Agatsi. I'm going to need to figure out how to say that name if he does make it into the team um, and then the last player we brought in uh, Ben but Ben Marlow a 19 year old central midfielder um, just again just to add a little bit more depth he's in on a non-contract he can play the thing that attracted me to him is I'm planning on playing with a ball winning midfielder and an advanced playmaker in the central midfield and he's fairly comfortable playing both of those positions he can also do a job as a defensive midfielder or an attacking midfielder and it's just good to have a little bit of versatility as a backup midfield player he's young he's got the potential to improve he's got a nice first touch a nice skill level um, he works hard and he's fairly quick and fairly fairly fit um, so physically he looks like the kind of midfield player I'd like to have and there's just that potential that if he does get a run in the side and luck is on his side he could turn out to be a pretty decent central midfielder at this level and that is the uh, is our pre-season and our transfers just to confirm again the board are looking for mid-table um, and there's some cups as well apparently but they're not bothered about them but enough of all that we need to get into the first live come of the season and we are away to Stockport we couldn't have hoped for a harder first game um, I would expect Stockport to be right up there winning the league at the end of the season and I would expect us to be a mid-table side so if we can go there and not lose that would be fantastic um, slight problem with the injuries as well Liam Mars the uh, right back who can play at left back who was expected who I was expecting to be some competition um, over on the left back side is injured for the first three months of the season so he's not available for selection Zach Mills is also injured the other right back is out for a month so we've lost both of those two fullbacks that I was so happy to have at the club so we are having to play young Dylan Casey at left back um, and Grant Roberts who really is a midfield player um, but he can drop back do a job at right back as well we've then got Stone and Piergiani as the two centre backs I'd struggle to find better centre-backs at this level. So I'm very happy with the two of them. And then Alex Scott is going to be in goal, the young goalkeeper. Uh, midfield, Scott Garner. Um, he's possibly a, one of the centre-backs at this level who would be better than the two we've already got. But I'm very happy with having him as a ball-winning midfielder. Um, he's hopefully going to allow the rest of the midfield to just push on, be a little bit more attacking. And we're going to have certainly Kane Felix on the left and Kyle Dixon as the advanced playmaker looking to get those two forward as much as possible. Um, Nicky Walker on the right side of midfield. I've set him as a wide midfielder. This is the part of my system that I'm most iffy about at the moment. The way I want this to work, um, and you can see with the way I've set up the, the full backs and the wingers on both sides. On the left-hand side, I want Kane Felix to be an out-and-out -out winger. Um, so when he dashes forward... 
Ghana can come across and cover. Um, Casey's going to be staying back most of the time. I've got him on a support instruction. So it's not going to be an issue when Felix, bom Felix bombs forward, hopefully picks up some goals. Yes, he'll leave gaps here, but we've got two players covering him. We can't do that on the other side because the midfield player over that side, Kyle Dixon, is going to be pushing forward himself. So what I want uh, Nicky Walker to do um, is to actually come inside a little bit when Dixon pushes forward and for our width on this side of the pitch to come from the right back, which would ordinarily be Zach Mills, but at the moment is Grant Roberts, which is why I'm not that concerned with playing a midfielder at right back because I want him to be pushing forward and providing the width on that side. So really, the 4-4-2 is how we're going to look when we're defending, but when we're going forward, I want us to almost become three at the back with the two centre backs and the left back, width coming from that right back um, and from Felix, and then sort of a two man midfield of Garner and Walker with Dixon pushing forward behind the strikers. It sort of sometimes looks a bit like that in the pre season friendlies. I think there's going to be a lot of tweaks involved, and I've got an awful lot of. Uh, team instructions, <laughs> certainly more than I would normally have uh, for a first game of the season. But I really want to try and get us playing this way. So it might be fantastic. It might be brilliant. It might just lead to us getting hammered and we might need a rethink. Um, but we'll see how it goes in this first game. And then up front, we've got Deli Adibola as a target man on support. Um, and I certainly want Felix and Dixon to be running beyond him. Um, and then Dale Southwell as a poacher. He's there to score goals, um, and hopefully that's exactly what he's going to be able to do. So we're going for control, we're going for fluid. Um, I want us to play good football. I've given us instructions for short passing, playing out of defence, knocking the ball around. I would like us to be playing good football. Like I say, at this level, that could just lead to us getting absolutely hammered. But maybe as we get good at it, we could end up playing a little bit of decent football and going up the league and doing it the right way. That's a worrying sign. Most of the team are struggling for match fitness. That shows I'm rubbish at pre-seasons. Excellent. Stockport are rightly the favourites. So let's see how badly we get hammered. Um, like I say, anything at all that we can get out of this game will be a bonus. Oh, great. My assistant manager doesn't feel confident enough to give me any opposition instructions. Anyone else want to have a crack at it? No? We're all too scared, are we? Well, you've been a big help, guys. Um, yeah, I'm happy to encourage them. They look happy with that. Yeah, yeah. let's go out there and impress everybody then. So let's start the match. And let's see how we get on. So we're in the yellow. And I'm hoping that you'll see us playing some nice football, certainly for this level. Um, of course, the problem with trying to play football at this level is it can all go wrong and it, you can start to look a little bit messy. So, um, I don't know, we'll see. This might be a bit ambitious for the Conference North. We've not conceded a goal yet, though, so that's a positive. Um, and we've had a couple of free kicks in that little area on the edge of the area there. Um, and they've been the only two shots of the game from either side at the moment. We are getting more possession than Stockport are. And we've got a highlight again. Roberts with the cross. That was a really poor cross. But it was good to see him getting in a crossing position. And Southwell, I would have hoped to have done better with that half chance, but uh, never mind. Uh, Felix hovering on the edge of the area picks up that corner, and it comes back to Felix again. Uh, Stone slotting it through to Dixon, to Adibola, who can't turn and get it through to Southwell, unfortunately. Um, I'm quite happy with this so far. 20 minutes in, we've had five shots. We've, had, we've dominated the possession, really, and all the highlights have been us. This is a good start. Uh, Dixon picking up the ball now, threading it to Adebola, who puts it back to Garner, who finds Felix. Felix would have liked him to find space out wide there, but Roberts has made a... Oh, there you go. That's what we're looking for. Roberts, the right back, was a furthest player forward there. Got himself into a great crossing position, um, and he's just knocked that across the ball for Dale Southall to knock home. And that, that is the kind of goal I had in my head when I was putting this tactic together. I don't know if it's always going to work like this. But that is spot on. If we can defend as well in this system, we might be onto something here. All right, this is where we're going to get hammered. It's the first Stockport highlight there's been, and we are not getting close to getting that ball off him. Um, Got as well to keep hold of that. Hopefully we can make something of it. He's held on to the ball a long time there, but the long free kick up to Adebola, and that's why we wanted Deli Adebola in the side. He won that ball, knocked it down to Southwell, who did find it out to get it out to Felix, but nothing really came of it. And 
Stockport broke back on us very quickly there. That was a bit of a worry. But time is continuing to tick on. We've still had far more shots than them. We've still had more of the possession, although not by as much of a margin as it was. Possession's starting to even out a little bit now. Um, and that guy was in a lot of space there. That's a potential gap we need to fill in this tactic. Stone does well. Hits it forward to Southwell, who uses his pace to get... Oh, he was offside. He made up a lot of ground there, though. Didn't finish it anyway, so we're not that bothered. And Stockport have a free kick. Oh, and our goalkeeper has spilled that, and that is exactly what we are saying before about why you need a good goalkeeper at this level, because he has just spilled that out. He's just dropped it back on his own feet. Couldn't have just tipped that around the post. And he's twice as good as, as Rapas, the goalkeeper he's replacing, but still not good enough. We, we are very much on the lookout for a a proper goalkeeper it might be a case of needing to bring someone on loan at some point but that is really disappointing because we've dominated that first half we played so well we've had more chances we've had more possession and to just gift a team like Stockport a goal by dropping a free kick onto their feet is just really frustrating um, yes I am happy with a foot performance on the whole um, I'm not going to hammer Alex Scott individually purely because he's a young lad yes he made a mistake but I don't want to destroy his confidence um, Kane Felix has picked up a knock which is a bit of a worry um, Owen Heather can play out wide um, he is more of a striker we brought him in to be a backup target man um, but he can do a job out there he's not completely comfortable but he's better than any other option we've got on the bench so we'll pop him on there see if he can get, get some good positions the way Felix was and that straight away was a nice diagonal ball that Heather just found himself a little bit flat footed not able to get onto that I think I don't like to say it, but I think Kane Felix probably would have got onto that, and we might have been 2-1 up. But um, he's injured. There's nothing we can do. Hopefully he's not injured for a long time, because as I say, in my Boston save that I did last year, he really was an important player. Um, and I would like him to become one again this time round. Game's going very quiet. This is where the fact that we're not fully fit, we did have a a poor pre-season in terms of fitness. This might start to cause a problem for us. Adibola now finds Dixon, who does make it out to Heather. And considering that lad's a striker, I would have hoped for him to do better there. But Roberts now with a corner. Doesn't really find anyone. And now Kyle Dixon has given away a free kick. And the attack is over. I think it's time for another substitution. Let's see what we've got. Um, I think probably Deli Adibola needs to come off. He shouldn't really be playing. Mind you, his fitness looks no worse than anyone else's, so perhaps he's fine. Um, have we got anyone who can go out onto that right wing? Not really. Nicky Walker's not had a great game. Uh, Dylan Casey, also the, the new left-back, is struggling, but we really don't have anyone to replace him with. Um, I think what I am going to do is bring off Deli Adibola. Joey Johnson did play a game as a, uh, a target man in, friend in one of the friendlies. Picked up a goal, played quite well alongside... Dale Southwell, so I've got no problem with playing him as the target man. So we'll give him 20 minutes, rest Adebola's legs. Um, and hopefully, between the two of them, we can pick up a winner. Although Stockport have got lots of space there. That big gap that is going to appear behind our left winger wasn't really being plugged in the way I hoped it would there. Um, and we've got the ball away, but Southwell was the only man forward and couldn't really get it under control. Um, all these all these highlights of Stockport now, we really are starting to tire and they're really getting back into the game. Possession's evening, evening out. If we're going to make anything from this, we need to score soon and then just try and hold on to the game. Heather's done really well winning the header there. As I said, he's a target man playing out wide at the moment. But Garner's got the ball now, brings it back to Heather again, who finds Southwell and I would have expected him to do better there. That was a clear-cut chance. But we've got the corner now. We've got a centre-back taking the corner. That's something I need to have a look at. Lionel Stone's a good player, but I want him in there getting on the end of those, not not taking the corners himself. Right. And Stone's missed the interception there as well. And we shouldn't, we need to be closing down more. We're giving them a lot of space to just sort of knock the ball around on the edge of our area. And with better finishing, they'd be punishing us for it. Right, Scott Garner is absolutely shattered. We need to be bringing him off sooner rather than later he's our captain as well and such an important player but we can't leave him on when he's down to 50 percent 
fitness. And Ben Marlow, we brought him in because he can play in either of those central midfield spots. So he's not going to be as effective there as Garner is, but hopefully he's going to be able to do a good job. And Lionel Stone t makes the tackle again and lumps it forward, but no one's there to chase onto it. Garner again winning a header to, he header to Heather. Now Johnson's got the ball, feeds it through to Dixon. Oh, and both Dixon and Heather sh could and should have done better there. Um, we've had four clear-cut chances in this match now. We really need to be more uh, more prolific with our finishing. Johnson with an excellent flick onto Southwell, though. And again, a poor finish. He wasn't doing this in pre-season. We've had 15 shots and 16 shots now, and only four of them have been on target. That's something that really is going to need to improve because it's no good getting dominating games if you're not gonna if you're not gonna get the finishes. Walker now with the ball finds Johnson, who brings it back to Marlow. Southwell's in a lot of space there, and that is an excellent goal and a really good finish. It's his second goal of the game. We're two one up. Two minutes of the game to go. Let's see this again. That is a really nice through ball. Southall had lost his marker there completely. And that's a more difficult finish than some of the ones he'd missed. Can't really complain when he gets two goals in a game. Though. And they're two very different types of goal as well. So that's really encouraging. We just need to hold on now. Southall with the ball again to Heather. And now Johnson's through. Can he finish here? No, but Southall follows up and that's his hat trick. Excellent stuff. We're up to third in the league. And after all that talk of needing to be more prolific, the guy with... Put, we've pinpointed as our goal-scoring threat has gone and got himself a hat-trick on the first game of the season away to one of the best teams in the league. That is a good start to the season. We just need to see this out now. There's no coming back for Stockport now, surely. And that's a good save from Gott. We've had 20 shots in this game. This is this is encouraging. Come on, let's see this out now. We don't need any more highlights at this point. Is this going to be it? Kick it up to Johnson. No, doesn't even get that far. Southwell has had an excellent game. We've played really well. We've passed the ball around well. We've kept possession well. And that is just a good result. Can't complain about that at all. Where does that put us in the league? I think it said third, didn't it? Um, yeah, we're up to third in the league. So that is fantastic. Um, and that's it for today's video. Um, if you've liked what I've done there, please pop a like on there. Especially, I'd be interested in seeing your comments on the slightly changed up format of this episode compared to my other series that I've done on YouTube. This is, I've enjoyed doing the episode this way. So if you enjoyed watching it done in this style, um, make sure you pop a like on there and a subscribe so you don't miss out on the future episodes. And let me know what you liked and didn't like in the comments. This is a, this is going to be a long term save. I plan for at least 10 or 15 seasons on this really do plan to play a nice long save so would love your comments and feedback on how i can make the series better and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on tomorrow's episode thanks very much for watching